Hello and welcome to the Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium here at Ottawa Glendorf High School. For tonight's matchup between the Lakota East Hawks and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mack and Scott, I'm really looking forward to tonight's matchup. Uh, me as well, me as well. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game for both squads. Keys, first, number one is no Perry White. Now those of you that don't know, Perry White is a reporter from Superman, but that's not the Perry White I'm talking about. I'm talking about Trey Perry for the Hawks, who averages 18 points a game. The Titans got to know where he is at all times. On the other hand, the Hawks got to know where Colin White is, and he's averaging 21. So both teams got to know where the best player is, and that's why I came up with Perry White. Key number two is control the paint. Teams that have the same kind of skill set coming in, the team that dominates the paint usually comes out victorious. And last but not least, both teams like to get up and down. Both teams like to score in transition. I think the team that scores the most in transition comes away victorious tonight. It is the nightcap at the OG Winter Classic, and when we return, we'll have tonight's starters in the opening tip. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Supreme Court. Starting lineups are being announced for both teams. We'll take a look at tonight's starters. Starting first with the Lakota East Thunderhawks. They are going to start number zero, Trey Perry. Number one, LeBron Penny, Benny Powell. Number four, Julian Mitchell. Number 12, Derek Jackson. And number 15, Josiah Smith. Out of a Glandor starting lineup looks like this. They're going to start number 22, Colin White. Number 11, Theo Mag. Number 24, Caden Erford. Number three, Grant Schrader. And number 21, Hunter Steckscholdy. Take a look at the Thunderhawks, coached by Clint Atkins. Record of 8 and 11, 6 and 8 overall in the conference as they are out of the Greater Miami Conference. And for the Titans, coached by Tyson McLaughlin, 14 and 3, 7 and 0 in the Western Buckeye League, number 5 ranking in the uh, Associated Press poll, and the number 5 ranking in the RPI. Tough game last night, uh, at least out of the gates for the Titans as they actually found themselves down a point to the Indians, but then the offense found their groove, went on to score 80 points over the final three quarters. Colin White immediately makes his presence felt as he comes away with that rejection, and that one goes out of bounds and he'll stay with the Thunderhawks. Yeah, Trey Perry, he, when he gets the ball, he attacks the glass. Titans gotta make sure they know where he's at at all times. Immediately, Caden trying to come away with the takeaway. Looked like his foot was out of bounds that time as Kay Nerford was in the right place able yeah. to get that takeaway. But great adjustment by Kaden. He kind of slipped off his guy and jumped that passing lane and almost got himself a, a steal there. Unfortunately, he knocked it out of bounds for the Titans. Dakota able to inbound the ball, but immediately met with a double team. Long pass to the other side of the court, gathered in by Jackson, who hands off to Perry. Hunter Steckscholdy draws the assignment for Perry tonight. Steckscholdy had a good night last night against Shawnee. He scored over 20 points. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of screen slip, little uh, flare screens. Do a lot of ball faking just like that. Get the man off the, off the mark, and fortunately for the Titans, come away uh, miss. Joe Perry not able to connect on the three-point shot. Colin White brings it up for the Titans. Hands it off to Erford. Erford head fake. He's going to drive. Let's the shot go. That's going to go in, but they're going to say offensive foul. Good job by Derek Jackson, you know, the 6 7 center. No, a lot of times you see a center, as you can see right here. He steps up, takes the charge, mans up. He, you know, he could have won up and tried to block that, but he's right there at the rim and, you know, kind of a different rim protector. He sets there and, and takes the charge. So that was our Union Bank instant replay. They are our sponsor tonight. Union Bank is committed to you. Trey Perry gets the inbounds. Side with Landon comes out in full court pressure. And we'll get rid of it. Jackson back to Perry. Perry works it around the top of the key. Got to mention that Perry made a pass to Mitchell. And he, you know, that long, long arm just snatched it out of the air. It looked like it was almost going to be a turnover, but down here, and did a heck of a job to grab that and can body control to not turn it over as well. Zaya Smith guarded by Theo Mag. Drops it back off as Dakota East being very patient with their possession. He's going to like run a lot of clock, run a lot of sets, trying to get Perry some open looks. Uh, what happens when you 
jump him. They're going to slip screens behind it. Smith has to kick it out into the corner. Here's Jackson. Jackson puts it up. That one's no good. White with the rebound. Steck Schulte brings it up. Kicks it down into the corner for Erford. Erford cross court to Schrader. Schrader thought about the three-pointer for a second. Perry came over, came over quickly to deny. Yes. And they, they're forcing everything to the middle. Perry jumped it to making sure, trying to make Schrader to go baseline, and then so that's where the help is. Here's Mag. He's going to drive, gets it off the glass, and in. Nice job using the opposite side of the rim that time, kind of as an extra defender. And Mag gets the first two points of the night. Good job, but the help didn't come, so Mag just kept going all the way to the rim and kind of talk about control of the paint. There's one advantage for the Titans there. Perry, long three-pointer. That one's off the back of the iron, ends up into the hands of Steck Schulte. Steck Schulte, he's going to try to drive. Kind of gets that off the glass, no good. And the ball's tipped around and eventually ends up in the hands of the Thunderhawks. Kind of continuing what he did last night. He was tacking the rim really well. Nice find down yes. low. Vanny Powell is able to get two points. Yeah. Grant Schrader got caught staring at, staring at the cookie jar there, and this man went back door and got an easy basket. Schrader trying to go to the inside. It's knocked away before it gets to Mag. Ends up out of bounds. It'll stay with the Titans. Jackson did a good job of knocking that one away. Just about two minutes gone here in the first quarter. Tied at two. Both offenses just trying to fill each other out right now. This one goes out of bounds as Derek Jackson gets his hands on it. Good, did a good job of staying high so he doesn't allow Theo Mag to pin him. Stays high as he gets around, knocks that one out of bounds. Great defense by Jackson. Here's Erford for three, and that one's good. Nice job of using his teammate to get a little bit of extra space. He's able to connect. Great out of bounds play, great, great screen. White gets a deflection. Levi Underbrink checks in. So the pressure caused a little bit of problem for the Thunderhawks, but they're able to get it into the front court. Mm, White almost got that one. He sure did, and if he did, that was a free run <laughs> yeah. all the way to the basket. That was going to be uh, a loud noise in here, I'm sure. That three-point shot is off. Ends up into the hands of Underbrink. Gets it over to White. White, going to try to get to the lane, gets cut off, but we're going to have a foul on the floor. Smith, I believe. Didn't really like that one too well, but that was definitely a foul. Zaya Smith did pick up that foul, his first team's first. As the Titans are going to take it out underneath their basket as Dave Westrick checks into the game for Ottawa Glandor. Number 24, Ty Smithers checks in for uh, the Hawks. White kicks out the Steck Schulte. Steck Schulte for three. That one's no good. Mag there for the rebound and the putback. Can't get that one to go. Gets his own rebound. And tried to get it out before he touched out of bounds, but couldn't quite get rid of it. So it's going to go back to the Thunderhawks. Titans are really controlling the paint a little bit so far early, and uh, I think Coach McLaughlin is pretty happy about that. So we're going to have. Think, and we're going to uh, have a timeout for a second, yeah. so we'll step aside and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School, where the Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Lakota East Thunderhawks are just a few minutes here into the first quarter. We know we jumped out a little quick on that last break. There was a medical emergency in the stands. Um, it appears everybody is going to be okay. Our thoughts and prayers are, are with the uh, individual um, and all of the first responders that came and, and quickly went to his aid and, and got him out of here. The teams have had some time to warm up as they had gone to the locker room, but we are back on the floor here and just about ready to go and resume this first quarter. Yeah, that was nice that all the people that came to the aid of the individual, that was great. All the people were coming out of the stands and everyone was helping. That was awesome. So now back to the game. That's what we Lakota East finds themselves down by three here early. Both offenses have struggled a little bit in the early going as they're filling each other out. And Lakota East starts with the basketball. Trey Perry's going to bring it up for the Thunderhawks, working against Underbrink. Gets it over to Benny Powell. And as Lakota East, we've seen, has been very patient with their offensive sets. That time, though, a wide open look at three, but can't connect. Colin White. 
Brings it down, stops about free throw line, has to get rid of it. Tries to sneak it in through the back door that time. Thunderhawks come up with the steal. And you saw Trey Perry go all the way in that time for two. Yeah, he does quick hands, and he, you know, when he gets in transition, he doesn't know what to do with it when he gets down there. Here's Erford, another three-point try. That one's off. Next shoulder comes up with it. Tried to find Mag down low, but the Thunderhawks come away with the take. Yeah, I'm sure Stex would like that one back. He probably would have shot it. He gave up a good shot for probably not a better shot, but he, you know, that's unselfish basketball. Unfortunately for him, there was a Thunderhawk there, knocked that one away. Here's Ty Smyers. He's checked into the game for Lakota East. He's up along. Julian Mitchell tries to get baseline, cut off by White. Step back, shot on its way. Benny Powell not able to connect, fight for the rebound. Ended up in the hands of Lakota East, Derrick Jackson, but he can't finish it. Colin White will bring it up for Ottawa Glendor. He's got to do a better job boxing out and go get that rebound. White kicks it out, Steck Schulte for three. That one's no good. As both offenses still continue to be a little bit cold here in the first. And for my uh, unofficial stats, I got one made out of eight threes attempted by both teams. So they're not really shooting it good from deep so far, but obviously we found out in various games that could change. Fires for three, no good. Theo Mag able to tip it to himself, gets the rebound. Hunter Stecksholdy brings it up for the Titans. Utterbrink guarded by Perry, has it taken away. Perry with those quick hands yes. reached in, was able to snatch it away. On the loose ball, we're gonna have a foul. I tell you, it, you leave it out in front of him, he goes and gets it like right here. He got his hands in there, and he, he goes and attacks because he knows he wants to get down and score in transition. He knows a lot of teams, you know, their defense is a key on him. So when he gets out there and gets a steal, he wants to get out there and get before the team's set up and then uh, put three or four guys on him. Levi Underbrink was called for that foul. It's his first team second. My official count, I got uh, five turnovers for the Titans and zero for the uh, Hawks. So Titans are keeping it close because they're turning the ball over. Hayden Meadows checking into the game for the Thunderhawks. Hands that one off to Benny Powell. Theo Mag was able to get a little bit of that basketball, but Benny Powell gathers it back in. We'll get two on Levi probably here. On a break, I think. A little bit of bump. Maybe or, or second one on Erford, one of them. Looks like, looks like it's on uh, Levi Underbrink, his second. That time Julian Mitchell was trying to split the defense, trying to drive. Levi Underbrink picks up his second foul. He's going to take a seat. Thirteenth foul for the Titans. Julian kind of poses a mismatch. He's a tall, lanky guy that can put it on the floor and, and get by you. And when he gets to the rim, he knows what to do with it. So he's kind of going to he's going to be a problem for the Titans. Perry pulls it out, lets the offense get set before they run. And, and, you know, this pace right now is in favor of the Hawks. They want to slow it down. They want to keep it in the 40s, low 50s. Tides want to get out and shoot and, and uh, get it in the 60s and the 70s. Stecksholdy went for the steal, and that left oh, just enough shot. space for Trey Perry. The Euro steps in the lane and is able to get that one to go. And what they do is they stre stretch the Titans out, and then once – Perry sees an opening. He just attacks it and gets to the rim. Here's Steck Schulte. Changes directions. Goes left hand off the glass. No good. Mag tried to get the rebound. Couldn't. But ended up in the hands of Dave Westrich. That also didn't go down. So out of with Landorf last night, quite a few offensive rebounds. They've given themselves second and third opportunities here in the early going as well, but haven't been able to do much with them. Right. They, haven't they haven't converted on that. Here's Meadows working against Mag. Mag, good defense, able to redirect that basketball. Ends up in the hands of Colin White. Titans uh, settle for one here. 6-5, Dakota East on top. Seven seconds left to go in the quarter. Mag keeps it himself, pulls up from the free throw line. That one hits the back of the iron. Perry going to try to go all the way down the court. Going to be just right of the basket. That brings the first quarter to a close. A low-scoring one here in Ottawa Glandorf as the Cody East is on top, 6-5. to five. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back tonight. Scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Second quarter just about underway here at the Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium in Ottawa Glendorf. We have a jam-packed Supreme Court for what we expect it to be, you know, a really good matchup tonight. And the defenses have been on display as it is just 6-5. Ottawa Glendorf last night got off to a slow start, and the offense then started kind of to, to get rolling. We'll see if they can do that again here tonight. Yeah, I mean, Titans, one of four from threes and one of six from twos, and, you know, uh, the Hawks ain't really tearing it up either. They're three of eight from twos and 0 from five for threes. So both teams, and I think a lot of it is because of the defensive pressure, but as you said, Titans kind of turned it on the second quarter last night, and they got to put some balls in the basket so they get in their press and get some transition as Hunter Stexley turns the ball over for the Titans' sixth turnover on the night. Little miscommunication from Stex, Scholdy, and Erford there. So the Thunderhawks are going to get the basketball back. Hunter Stex, Scholdy picks up Trey Perry in the backcourt. Jackson back to Perry. Perry goes with the left. He is so fast yes. off the ball. And, and, and even with the ball, he can get by you. Pulls up from the corner. That three-pointer's off. And we're going to have a foul as Caden Erford was just in great position that time on the box out. And Julian Mitchell's going to get whistled for the foul for the over the back. His first. Yeah. That was a great box out by Caden to keep his position and, you know, be strong and don't let the offensive guy get past him. Hunter Steck Schulte bringing up for the Titans. Hands off to Erford. Erford back to Steck Schulte, and they're trying to feed Colin White down low, but it looks like Jackson got his foot on that one. As Elijah Perry checks in, it looks like he is the uh, ball hawk, man. He was all over Steck as he brought the ball up the floor. Here's Erford down in the corner trying to go inside the mag, but coming around mag. Trey Perry, I think, got that one, I believe. Trying to poke that one away, and Trey Perry does get whistled for that foul. It'll be the team's third, his first. Titans uh, kind of going a little big here. Long inbound, out to Mag. Mag guarded by Jackson. Picked up his dribble, had to get rid of it. Erford comes out to help. Perry with tight defense. Right now, Ottawa Glendorf not finding a lot of space on the offensive side, but there's Erfurt wide open down low. Can't get that one to go. Offensive woes for the Titans continue. Yeah. I think part of it is, is Caden had it. He just didn't drop step and get his shoulder squares. He kind of shot that sideways. I think they're looking for shot blockers coming in instead of trying to score the basketball. And I think it's travel. That's a good call by the officials. He did switch his pivot feet when he reversed pivot, and, and uh, that was a great call. So another turnover by the Thunderhawks. Ball goes back to the Titans as Colin White gets it. He's working against Benny Powell. Double team was coming. Colin White able to get out in front of it. And, and they've been kind of doubling White. Anytime he gets the ball, they're jumping out on any screen or he gets puts it on the floor, they're double teaming him. Here's Erford going back on the inside to Mag. Mag, one on one. Spins, right hook, no good. Short. As Perry comes up with the rebound. He's gonna use that speed on the run out. Benny Powell. Nice Great athletic move, move to get around Erford, but he cannot yeah. finish. Both teams struggling. White's going to try to drive and get yeah. it going. He's foul. He's going to get fouled, make a trip to the least famous rescue chicken free throw line. Thunder off foul number 12, Gary Jackson. You know, White said about right here, said, okay, I'm going to the rim. Stop me. And then he went hard and got two shot foul there. Colin White makes his first trip to the free throw line tonight. So far, scoreless. He had 28 last night. Looking to see if he can't get in the scorebook now. First free throw is up, and it is good. We've said this many a times, Nate. You've seen this, you know, when a, a score just has got to see that ball go through the net, and then all of a sudden they score in bunches. That's all these, a lot of these players out here playing right now. I just got to see that ball go through the net so they get some confidence. You know, you see it come up short and you get frustrated with yourself. And you, again, we, we forget that there's 16, 17 year old kids out here playing and they get a little frustrated. Trey Perry's going to go all wow. the way in himself. 
was able to finish at the rim. Is really nobody came over yeah. to challenge him, and he had a free run. And he, he about three quarter court just thought, oh, I better pull this one up, but nobody came. So you know, great judgment by him just to keep going and get all the way to the rim. Colin White a little short on that pull up, going to go out of bounds, but stay with Ottawa Glamour. Tell you, there's a battle down there between Theo Mag and Jackson. Those two guys are going at it. And Jackson, you know, looking at his arms right here, he's a pretty well put together young man. Both these guys are kind of leaning on each other and battling, and uh, it's going to be interesting to watch the rest of this way. Inbound goes to White. White gets to the free throw line, thought about pulling up, but has to get rid of it. His next shoulder he wasn't ready for the pass, and it goes out of bounds. Turnover number seven for the Titans. Couple of the Titan faithful <laughs> like started clapping and wake up, Titans. You think it maybe is a eight o'clock in the morning game. Here's Perry, kicks it out. Danny Powell gonna hold on to it, let the offense get in position. You know, I'm impressed as well, coach. East does not take many bad shots, and you know, Benny Powell could have put his head down one to the to the rim, or either Jackson could have shot one. Trey Perry, he lowers his head, gets into the lane, but he's short on that one. Steck shoulder comes up with a tough rebound. Pushes up ahead to Erford. Erford picked up his dribble, has to go somewhere with it. Had to force it into White, and it gets taken away. Perry for three. That one's going to be off. And it's going to say Steel Mag went up, went off his fingertips. Thought it might have been touched by the Dakota East player behind him. Official say no. And official puts the ball down because they weren't really in, in action as Perry runs to go get it. Not Perry, excuse me. Benny Powell goes and gets it. Now here's Perry. Behind the back, in the lane, created some space and gets that one wow. to go. What great body control as Coach McLaughlin has seen enough. So we have a timeout on the floor. Coach McLaughlin not happy with the effort out of his team as they find themselves down 10-7. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Coach McLaughlin not happy during that timeout. Typically on those full timeouts, you see the team have a chance to sit down and take a break. He said, nope, everybody up. You can almost hear them all the way up here trying to get a little bit of life into this team. Yeah, and again, they're just getting outplayed. And have another whistle. This time the foul is going to go on number 34 Elijah for the Perry. Dakota yep. East. That's Elijah Perry. And he's done a heck of a job. Like He's a ball hawk. He is on the dribbler. And, and it's like maybe his brother's Trey. I don't know. They got the same last name. It might he kind of looked at him and said, where are you going? As the Titans turn the ball over again, fourth time in uh, only not even halfway through this quarter, fourth time already this quarter. And you're just seeing mistakes yeah. out of this team that you're not used to seeing. Yeah, it's miscommunication, a little bit of off on the timing. These just aren't the typical things that you do. Yeah, and, and what it is is they're like a half step, you know, throwing it a half step ahead or a half step behind, and they're just a, just off just a tick. And here's Perry all the way into the basket. He gets that far. He's going to score every time. I mean, Titans got to step up and guard him before he gets to the paint. Jay Perry with 10 points on the night. Continues just to use that speed to run the floor, give himself his own basket. Here's Steck Schulte, he drives, kicks it out. Schrader for three off the front of the rim. Theo Mag comes up with the rebound, but Perry was right there to take it away from him. And we're going to have a travel call. Perry did a nice job taking it away from Mag, but then started to run before he could get his dribble going. 12-7, Lakota East on top, 344 left they, to go in the half. I'm impressed with Perry's help, man. They help and they get to the dribbler. White goes and they're sending two guys at him. And uh, Benny Powell's doing a good job too, containing White. Actually misses that one. Here's Myers, kicks it over to Perry. Perry with the jumper. And that's now eight in the quarter for Trey Perry. 12 on the game. He's got 12 of their 14 Titans. You know, we talked about that in the pregame. We got to know where Perry is, and Titans are allowing him to get into the paint. And when he gets in there, he knows how to score. Colin White trying to create. He's going to be fouled by Perry. That'll be his second. second right. And that, maybe that's the only way the Titans can contain him if he has to go to the bench because he's in foul trouble. That is the sixth team foul for Lakota East. As Colin White is going to go to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Colin White, just two points on the night. Both of those came from his last trip to the free throw line. Able to make that one. 
Now three for three tonight. You know, what, you know, if you're a uh, Hawks fan right now, you're you're worried about your offense just checked out and is going to sit on the bench for a while. He's got 12 or 14. Now somebody else has got to step up and and score if you're a Hawks fan. Titans now got to put the clamps down and see see if they can turn on some turnovers and some easy baskets down five. Last four points for the Titans have all come from the charity line as they still struggle to get things going from the floor. Here's Jackson. It up to Smyers. Elijah Perry. I, I, I would imagine they're going to try to milk two minutes, minute and a half off. They're not going to, unless you give them a layup, they're going to work this ball around and take some clock up five. They're happy. This is their pace. And the Titans, you know, usually get a little antsy when teams do stuff like this because this, they don't like, you know, they want to get up in you and force you to turn the ball over and get down the other way. Three-pointer on its way, and it is good. Julian Mitchell, nice catch and shoot. Yeah, and you know what? He got such a good job of getting his shoulder square, coming up and knocking that one down. Here goes Erford. He gets a three-pointer. That's his second of the game. Kind of the same thing as Erford. Feet set. Heck of a job by Sexton. He put it right on the numbers, and he knocked that one down. And he Powell goes for the drive. He's going to be fouled as Steck shoulder is there. Got a little arm. That might. That's definitely first. Take a look at the Union Bank instant replay. Benny Powell does a nice job looking off the defender yeah, with his eyes. He's right. Deck shoulder came from behind, picked up the foul. He kind of looked him off, and thinking that somebody was going to step up and stop him, and he took that big step and got through. He's like, "Well, I'm going to keep going," and got to the rim. Makes his first foul shot there. LeBron Benny Powell makes his first free throw from the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Makes this an 18-12 game with 2.09 left to go. Lines up his second shot. It's on its way. This one is short. Mad comes in through the gap. Allen White, guarded by Elijah Perry, brings it up. He is. Whoever has the ball there. Oh, what a back pick for Kay Nerford. That's a heck of a pass. Let's see if that gets him going. And Colin White makes his first basket from the floor tonight. As Ottawa Glendorf gets this down to four. Myers almost lost it, gets it over to Elijah Perry. Feeds it down low, and Smyers with the put up for two. Now Colin White, a minute 30 left to go. He's going to drive. Floater in the lane, and that one's good. And you called it, partner. That last one, it looks like maybe the basket finally yeah. opened up for Colin White. Right, and again, it's, it is absolutely amazing when a scorer sees it goes in. And he takes that one yep. away. Trying to lose Julian Mitchell, spins. And out of nowhere comes wow. Elijah Perry. Man, I don't, turned that, on the burners and got that one from behind. That young man can get it, boy. I tell you, he can fly. And he's a, you know, he is in your shorts when he's guarding you. I, I like that young man. Elijah Perry just picked up his second foul, though. Now one in one situation. As Colin White now five for five. You see the spin. Here comes Elijah Perry. Wow. Closing. Did you see that closing? He was three steps back. One, two, boom, and he was there. That, that's impressive. That's a guy that really takes pride in his defense, right? He, he's got he's to gotta sell out. He's got to hustle. You know, he could have took the play off, but he didn't, and he got there. That is super impressive. Colin White. Only able to connect on one of two free throws from the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. As Trey Perry has checked back into the game. Look for East to probably take the last shot here. They, they put Trey Perry back in. You know, their guy that controls everything they want to do. And we'll see if the Titans try to trap to get the ball out of his hands. But, you know, they're so good at spacing. And then they get Julian Mitchell in the middle, and he does a good job of being the uh, release valve there. Benny Powell was trying to see if he couldn't create that time as he was guarded by Grant Schrader. Schrader reached in, picked up the foul. That was Schrader's first foul. Tyler Glendor's fifth. Yeah, and Tynes can be a little bit more aggressive. They still got one before they get in the bonus, so we'll see. Trey Perry going to pull it back, let things develop. 30 seconds left to go. Here's Mitchell, hands it off to Perry. White almost able to take yeah. that one away. 20 Ooh. seconds left to go. 
Benny Powell about threw that over to the Titans, kind of just turned. Good, good for him. He kind of pass fake, but ooh, Stechny's get thrown to the side. Wow, Perry. that's a heck of a move there. Trey Perry able to come up with his tenth point of the quarter. Three seconds, two. One long three-pointer, no good for Steck Schulte. That's going to bring the first half to a close. So the offense has got off to a slow start. We started picking it up towards the end there of the second quarter. But Lakota East is going to go to the locker rooms on top, 22-17. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the Supreme Court in Ottawa Glendorf High School. Halftime is underway. Lakota East on top of the Titans, 22-17. Take a look at some first-half stats. First for the visiting Lakota East. They were one of eight from threes, nine of 17 from twos, two turnovers, three offensive rebounds, 18 defensive rebounds, and one of two from the foul line. Titans, on the other hand, were two of six from threes, three of 12 from twos, 10 turnovers, five offensive rebounds, 11 defensive rebounds, and what has kind of kept this game close is they're five of seven from the foul line. You take those five points away and this game is is up lopsided the Titans, you know, three of 12 from twos, and we kind of talked about dominating the paint, and right now, Lakota East is dominating nine for seven. They're not really shooting it good from deep, but they're getting into that paint, especially uh, number zero, Trey Perry, is getting wherever he wants, so the Titans got to do a better job of keeping him out of the paint, and then, you know, when they get in the paint, they got to finish. Yeah, we talked about Trey Perry in, in pregame, also talked about Colin White. Trey Perry currently with 14 points, Colin White with eight. And you talked about the free throws from Ottawa Glendor keeping in, uh, keeping them in this. And all five of those three free throws came from Colin White. Yeah, and you, you take them five away, he's only got three points. That, yeah, that's unheard of. That, that goes to show how well and how hard the East uh, Hawks are playing defensively against him. Lakota East starts with the basketball. As Benny Powell gets to the rim, Colin White a little bit late on that rotation, almost still able to get his hands on it. Benny Powell gets two more points. As they attack the rim. Here's Grant Schrader, works against Trey Perry, has to get rid of it. Colin White, gonna go baseline. Goes through the double team, goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Titans. He kind of won a foul. He thought he got hit on the arm. And Coach McLaughlin going down and asking. He, he kind of thought so himself. As he's got his hands out like nothing there. I don't understand that call. But nonetheless, he did touch it last. Hawks ball, as you kind of see here. See on the Union Bank instant replays. He goes to drive. Goes up and Derek Jackson. Got, yeah, he, he does. He gets right <laughs> on the hands. He's like, well, come on. So a fortunate break for the Dakota East as they get the basketball back and a seven point lead. Benny Powell, off Schrader for a second, gets it back over to Perry. Perry, Steck Schulte trying to play catch up. Perry gets to the lane, can't get it to go. Steck Schulte is having a little bit of a tough night trying to guard Trey Perry as that quickness has caused him some problems. With Landorf one and done again. It's not yeah. something we're used to seeing. No, you're right. You're right. We've seen it last night. They just hurt the team they played last night on the offensive glass and give East a good job. They got five guys that are doing a heck of a job boxing out and only allowing one shot for the Titans. And, you know, if you're a Titans fan right now, they ain't making money. Julian Mitchell can't get that three-pointer to go down, but Perry gets the rebound. Underneath the Derrick Jackson, he loses it. Mitchell gathers it back in and gets it back out to Perry. He's going to drive. Hero step in the lane, and that's going to be a foul. And I believe that they're going to call White. that on Colin White. Yep, yeah. and that will be his first or second. I believe it's his first. First, yeah. yeah they... so Perry taking a second to get up as he took a clean shot to the face. He might have gotten in the nose, and then he might have hit some of the fans or maybe the camera person down there. I don't know. We'll see. There we go. He's coming, coming here. in with a full head of steam. Oh, yeah, you got Colin that White did. He smoked him right in the nose. As Colin White was trying to come down on the basketball. He got a clean shot on Trey Perry's face. Yeah. Steps up to the free throw line and buries the first. Again, that was nothing intentional. He was just kind of trying to go up and block it, and his other hand came and just happened to get him in the nose. <laughs> Nonetheless, Trey, Trey Perry wasn't happy. He's still kind of feeling effects. You kind of see his nose a little red yet still. What a tough guy. He's still, that's not going to deter him from attacking the rim as hard as he does. 
Levi Unterbrink checking into the game for Ottawa Glendor, as does Elijah Perry for Lakota East. As Trey Perry is going to take a trip to the sidelines, but he just takes a minute, kind of gather himself back up. He took a, he took a hard shot at the nose, and he's over there kind of trying to massage it out a little bit. So now Lakota East showing a little bit of pressure. They come up. Colin White gets it up to Erfer. And really, that double team was one purpose and one purpose only to get it out of White's hand, and they didn't even look to take a steal off that double team. Colin White, fadeaway jumper is good. Yeah, you're gonna need a lot more of that if you're a Titans fan. So also, you know, that made basket also allows the Titans to get in their press. And, you know, they have made many baskets, so therefore they can't get in this press. And they, they get a lot of turnover, transition threes, and transition baskets off their press. And when you don't let them make baskets, they can't get into that. And that's a big part of their offense. Now here's Lakota East. They've had a methodical pace all night long on offense. Very patient, not trying to force anything. And, and been very, very sound with the basketball. They haven't really thrown the ball away. They're making good decisions with the ball. And we're going to have a whistle. This one's going to go against Grant Schrader. His second. Julian Mitchell trying to go for the drive. And Grant kind of wasn't happy, but he kind of extended two hands. And that is basically an automatic call for the official. I think it was a good call. Grant didn't like it, but. You can't defend with your hands, you got to defend with your feet, young man. So a short break for Trey Perry as he checks back into the game. Levi, Levi Underbrink now has the challenge of guarding him. Schrader trying to stay with Benny Powell. That's going to be his third. And Schrader's going to pick up back-to-back -back fouls as LeBron Benny Powell will make a trip to the free throw line. You know, he does attack the rim hard with his right hand, and I think Schrader kind of opened up a little bit on his, in his stance, and Benny Powell knows he did a great job, and he got by him with that first initial right hand and got all the way to the rim. So he, he does a good job of getting by you, especially with his right hand. Benny Powell able to connect on his first free throw from the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Makes this a 27-19 game with one more free throw to come. Second shot is up, and it is good. Nine-point game, 5.15 left to go here in the third. And, you know, I, Nate, you've done a couple Titan games this year, and when's the last time you've uh, had a and Titans only 19 in the third quarter? It's been a while, hasn't it? It has been quite <laughs> some time. Colin White, though, continuing to go to work as he got underneath the basket, and that was not an easy angle yeah. to get a shot up, but still able right. to get it down and go to the free throw line. Nice back screen by Erford. Titans got him on that early in the uh, first quarter, and Benny Powell right there on the elbow. That's an easy call for the official to make. Colin White has been deadly from the free throw line tonight, and he continues that with that mid shot. 28-22. Titans changing up the press and get a turnover. Stecksholder able to get his hands on that one. Takes it away. Here's on a break. Sticks it down to the corner. Erford for three. That one goes in. Kind of looked like it was a little long, and it was, and he got, got the shooter's roll on that one. Here comes the Titans. See, so get a turn off their turnover off the press and force the team to shoot quickly, and here, here we go. Theo Mag comes down with the rebound. Caden Erford now with the three-pointer in each of the first three quarters. Allen White goes baseline, drops it off to Theo Mag. He gets it in off the glass. One-point game as Ottawa Glandorf has come storming back. And we will keep it here during this timeout. As you can check out the Union Bank replay here for the Erford three-pointer. Long got the shooter's roll there, Erford, and then that led to a quick shot. And White, you know, attacks. Attracts so many people when he drives and knocks it off to Johnny on the spot, Theo Mag, who just comes to the rim knowing hopefully that White is either going to shoot it or he's going to drop it off. And that was a heck of a drive and a heck of a, uh, a little drop off there by Colin White. Where will your team land in the brackets and what does their road to Columbus look like? Get the most in-depth analysis and hear from coaches this Wednesday night at 9 p.m. The WOSN Selection Show presented by Layfield Welding and Industrial Supplies only on WOSN Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Take a look at the state rankings. 
Division two, Defiance number five, Ottawa Glandorf number five in Division three. That showdown coming next Friday night here in Ottawa Glandorf. Liberty Benton Spencerville also making appearances in the rankings. And then in Division four, well represented from our area, Jackson Center number two, Crestview number four, Rushi Marion Local, Patrick Henry all ranked in the top ten as well. As always, a lot of great basketball coming from this area which I think then also makes it even more interesting on the tournament draw as you look at the RPI and how that is going to be um, you know, kind of the guinea pig in Northwest Ohio. Yeah, right there. They're uh, basically uh, doing it for the state. Really, it's kind of a trial run here. And what they do is strength the schedule and who you play, and, and they all put it into some formula and come up with this RPI rating. And then that gets your seat for tournament. Dakota East comes up quickly into the front court coming out of the timeout. Ray Perry moves it around the perimeter. Here's Myers working against Theo Matt. Mag on the switch. He draws the assignment for Perry. Perry pull up jumper. That one's long. Colin White comes up with the rebound. He's going to float it ahead to Mag. Mag takes the contact. Cannot get it to go down, but he's going to go to the least famous recipe, recipe chicken free throw line. And you know, it doesn't matter if you're six, seven, Theo Mag or whatever. Anytime you got a big man that can run the floor and they can throw it up, you want to reward him for running because. Again, if you don't reward them for running, they're going to take off running. But good job. Mag kind of switched on, on Perry, and then they got the rebound, and he just took off. And good job by Colin White to throw it out in the head for him. Theo Mag able to connect on the first one. Mag was showing good versatility there back on the defensive end. It's a tough assignment for anybody, especially for the big men. And then knew that contact was coming. Perry didn't like the call, but there was a lot of contact down there. And Theo Mag ends up going one of two from the line. 28, 28, four minutes left to go here in the third. Ottawa Glandor finally getting some things rolling offensively. Well, and I think part of that is this game is kind of now getting in the Titans' pace, and there's another turnover. Hunter Stexley. And Colin White comes flying in, but I think the whistle came prior yeah, to that. I think Benny Powell got, got him before he got to the paint, I believe. Yeah. All right, Stexley. Yep, right there, boom. And that was a nice foul by Benny Powell. If you're going to foul, you want to make sure you avoid the right. points, yeah. able to do that, so this one's going to be out of bounds. And, and then he tried to block it then as well when he went up in there. That was uh... Leo Mag trying to get a little bit of space, has to kick it back out. Next holdy ends up with the basketball. Long pass into the corner. Next holdy works around into the paint floater. That one's off the front of the rim, and then Mag's going to get called for the foul. Dexter, it, it, it just doesn't seem as confident as he did last night. He just, he got in there and he, I think he was really looking to pass, but then he's like, I'm, I'm wide open, I'm on a shooting. He kind of, kind of short armed that. He didn't really shoot, he just kind of pushed it. And, and you know, he, he's a much better shooter than that. He just got to have confidence in himself. Right now, I think he's kind of doubting. He's missed a couple shots and he's doubting himself. Otto Grandor keeping the pressure on. Julian Mitchell into the middle. He throws it away. Mag comes up with it. He's going to drive. Derek Jackson comes over to take the contact. And Theo Mag's going to go to the free throw line for the end one. A bad one. Your uh, six-seven uh, center just attacks the rim and can score like that. That that's uh, that's pretty good. And a little bit of motion there at the end. Let's get that from his mom. Been a little bit of a long road for Ottawa Glendorf as they haven't had the lead in quite some time. They now find themselves up three. Yeah, and again, this is the pace. Titans are getting a little bit. They changed their press up. They're getting a little bit off this press. It's kind of confusing the Hawks, and we'll see what the Hawks can do here. And they kind of got a turnover, and they got to get out the shooter. Derek Jackson from the corner. That one's off. Zaya Smith comes up with a big rebound, and then Perry connects on the three-pointer. Trey Perry. Eyes this one up at 31 again with the long three-point shot. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. It'll be a full timeout, so we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Tonight's instant replay is provided by the Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. Timeout on the floor as we take a look at Lakota East Bench. And their assistant coach, Kyle Vanderhorst, is actually a native of Northwest Ohio, 
1999 graduate of, in Salina, played for Coach Mike Caney. Uh -oh. Says he gets home a bunch as Colin White throws it down. I'm going to guess on his trips home, he's not going to want to see that replay. But, and, yeah. you know, he reached out and we had a chance to talk to him. Talked about how he gets home a lot, watches uh, high school sports from this area. Really appreciated WOSN and everything they did and why this area is such a hotbed for the sports like they are. Ottawa Glendor feeling the momentum now. The big dunk by White, then the takeaway. Erford down to underbreak. Up to Theo Mag. Mag hands it back off to underbreak. Now White and Perry. This is the matchup that we haven't really seen much of. It'll be fun to watch these two go after each other. White gets the better end of that one. Pulls up a little bit long on that shot. Might have thought there might have been some contact coming that time. And it's going to go out of bounds. Yeah, right. And then they just kind of flipped the, the script tight and they kind of up screen. And White went long through a long home run pass. And when he gets that way, he knows what to do with it. And good decision by Julian Mitchell not to go up and uh, commit the silly foul. But, you know, I. I Beanie Powell's been doing a heck of a job on White and good job by that coaching staff to get him back in because he, he has been physical with White, kept him out of the paint. And then, you know, when he's been out, White's kind of got loose a couple times. Good job by the coaching staff to get him back in. Here's Jackson, it's cut off. Hands it over to Julian. And then the put back by Myers is no good. Mag comes up with the rebound. Ottawa Glandorf on top, 33-31. Minute 50 left to go here in the third. White has the double team, still had his dribble. Erford feeds Mag down low, creates a little bit of space. And a nice finish by Theo Mag. Mag having a good quarter, that's now six after only two points in the first half. Julian Mitchell pulls it back out as the offense is going to get set up. And he passes it over to Trey Perry right around midcourt. Mitchell, nowhere to go with it, has to get it back over to Perry, being guarded by Utterbrink. Perry trying to clear out, wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. Good job, lost, lost his dribble that yeah. time. I, I, Levi Utterbrink might have got his hand on there too. I was just ready to say good job by Levi to stay in front of him, and that's no easy task, believe me. Perry gets rid of it, ends up in the hands of Smyers. Zerford putting on the pressure. Now Perry gets the space he was looking for, but Spectrum. loses the dribble one more time. Erford is going to slow things down. 40 seconds left to go here in the third. Ottawa Glendorf has an opportunity to go to the fourth with the lead. Titans kind of flipped the script here. The East Hawks have five turnovers this quarter. Almost taken away by yeah. Smyers that time. Specksholdy able to get it. Erford comes out. 15 seconds to go. Coach McLaughlin giving instructions from the bench. As the offense gets set up. Colin White up top. Great move by Erfurt. Hangs into the air. Can't get it to go. Good White. Good job by White to get it. Might be a jump ball here, I think. And it is as Colin White went yeah. up high. Battled two different defenders. Able to wrap that one up. Possession arrow favors the Titans with 1.6 seconds left. Mitchell might have, uh, he's, he's kind of grimacing a little bit there. Mitchell is kind of bending over. Right? He doesn't look too happy. I don't know. He's kind of trying to stretch something out. Cody's bench. Helen, watch for the lob. Watch for the lob. Colin White comes around, and it's going to fall harmlessly to the ground. Elijah gets a shot up, and that one's going to be no good. After three quarters of play, Ottawa Glandorf has erased the deficit. They'll take a four-point lead into the fourth quarter. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Valley. 35-31, Ottawa Glandorf finds themselves on top. It has not been easy tonight as the offense has struggled at times against this Lakota East defense and the pace of play that Lakota East has wanted to play, but they have found a way and got themselves back on top. Yeah. And, and the Titans, what they've done, they've kept Lakota East out of the paint and they've forced five turnovers in that press. They've made some shots, got in that press, forced some turnovers, and again, they built this four-point lead. Got to continue this into the fourth quarter. As Perry has the floater in the lane, that one's good. Back to a two-point game. Man, he gets 
into that WBL area or pass, it's almost, you can buy, put it in the book, too. He puts a floater, or he gets all the way to the rim, and, you know, the, he's a scorer, man. He, he knows how to put the ball in the basket. Allen White runs the baseline, reverse layup is good. And uh, I believe he is also a scorer as well, man. Kind of like we talked about in pregame. We gotta got, we got to know where Perry White is, man. Both teams got to know where Perry is, and the other and West or East has to know where White is. Julian Mitchell waits for the defense to clear and keeps it back around the perimeter. Big time players step it up in the big time moments, and you know there's six minutes left to go in a tight game. Actually, ain't leaving him much. He, you know, he offer help. He's kind of staying really, really close to Perry over there. Dakota East just kind of continues that methodical pace right. of play. And not it, in much of a hurry. Right. Just let the offense run. Right. And this is what they want. They want this, and they want to run all kinds of screens, make you to over penetrate and like open up like that right there by Beanie. Beanie Powell, you, you know, Erford kind of jumped it and didn't let him go left. He didn't want hard right hand right, and he gets close to the rim. He knows what to do with it. Back to a three-point game, on the, or two-point game, excuse me, on the window up on top, 37-35. Erford hands it off to Schrader. Schrader playing with three fouls, hasn't had a whole lot of time here in the second half. Wow, both teams have really not subbed much. There have been about five guys, ten guys playing. White got bailed out. White found himself Josiah, in the man. air, but Josiah Smith, Smith bailed him out. Yeah, got a little aggressive that time. Yeah. So Colin White's going to make another trip to the Lee's David Recipe Chicken free throw line. Right. If he makes that, that's a heck of a shot. And uh, Smith kind of just came down. If he just would have kept his hands up, that would have been a very, very difficult shot for White to take. And White continues his hot shooting from the free throw line. Only one miss so far on the night. Lines up his second shot. And the announcer jinx is on. <laughs> We've seen that way too many times, haven't we? 38 35, three point difference. 5 45 left to go in the game, and he's with the basketball. Good job by Hunter Stetcher to come out here, not letting the ball get reversed to Smith. Jackson takes the long three pointer. No good, but Mitchell with the rebound. And we're going to have a foul on the floor. I believe it's going to be White. Yep, it is. Yep. Colin White picks up his second, team's fifth. Both teams now with five team fouls here in the second half. Stechley just, Perry just gets free just yeah. a little bit. They ran Stechley off of four screens there. Good job by Mag stepping in front and taking that one away. Heck of a job by Stetson. He had to go through four screens, and they ran Smith off four screens, and he was right there when he caught it. That is pretty impressive to not get hit to go off four screens. You know, one, two's bad enough, but four of them, that's pretty pretty impressive that he got through there. That's dedication to defensive end. So Schrader loses the Three. basketball, able to get it back. His next shoulder guarded tightly up top by Smith. Under five to go. Stechschulte has had a lot of work tonight as he has guarded Trey Perry for most of the evening. And after the night he had last night, and then so far what we've seen tonight, I'm going to bet he's going to sleep pretty well. Yeah. Ooh. A little bit of a push that time yeah. by Smith. Might have gotten away with it. And we're going to have a timeout. This one is going to be by the Titans. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. As Ottawa Glandorf has the three-point lead, 38-35. Take a look at the upcoming schedule. On Sunday on WOSN at 5.30, the Liberty Bet and Fort Loamie girls game. Crestview Delta St. John's at 7. And then the 100th anniversary game at St. Henry to follow. Next week, Fort Loamie Marion local girls. And then Wednesday night, the WOSN selection show at 9 o'clock, as we talked about earlier, followed by Pandora, Gilboa, and USV. Next Friday, Bluffton Allen East girls, and then live Stryker and Pettitsville, and then the sports report. Also next Friday on WSN, we'll see the Defiance Ottawa Glandorf game, which might be the game of the year in this area, and then Wayne Trace Paulding as well. 
I don't know that there's anybody in this area who knows anything about basketball that's not looking forward to that Defiance OG showdown. Uh, and I'm telling you, if you're coming, you better come early because uh, this place will be probably full by the time uh, JV halftime, maybe even before. 38-35, Otto Glendorf coming out of the timeout with the basketball. Colin White up top working against Benny Powell. Now looks like Otto and Landor are pretty content just to run the offense. We're going to have a foul hand fighting down there by Julian Mitchell. He was all over Colin White. Sixteen foul for Lakota East. Julian just would have jumped up. He would have had a steal, and I think that's what he's more like. Man, I should have had that one. Shoulder up top. Four minutes left to go in the game. He works against Mitchell. If you're East is really getting the Titans out by half court starting this offense. I, I think if Coach McLaughlin really wants to get at least to the three point line or a little bit farther in because they're going to have to go out to half court and it's not really conducive to good offense. Colin White working against Elijah Perry. Lost the basketball, but gathered it back in. And Elijah Perry continues with a good defense yeah, tonight. He, he, he moves his feet so well and quick. Colin White working off the screen. Gets it back to Erford. Erford goes baseline, spins. Falling down, has to get rid of it. Ends up in the hands of Benny Powell. Benny Powell on the run out. Decides to pull it back, let the offense catch up. Trey Perry gets the basketball. Three-point game, 3.15 left to go in the game. With the way that Lakota East plays offense, I can't imagine there's too many more possessions left in this game for yeah, either team. Well, they want to they want to spread you and try to get past with the dribble. And they're, they're, their guards are pretty quick with the ball, and they do a good job of this, too, is going back door and... Huge play by Trey Perry that time on the give and go. Gets to the lane, up and in, and he's going to go to the free throw line. And he's a little late, yep. Yeah, but Theo Mag does pick up that foul. It's his second, 16th foul. As Trey Perry has an opportunity now to tie this one up, and he does. Tied at 38. 254 left to go. Deck Schulte works against Elijah Perry. Mitchell comes over on the switch, switch cuts him off. And they're going to have a foul as Colin White is fouled by LeBron Benny Pe uh, Powell. Excuse me. And Benny Powell came out to challenge. And I believe, yeah, that it will be his fourth foul. I don't think they, they can't afford to lose him. He does such good things defensively as well as he's got to the rim several times tonight. Smith checks back in for the Hawks. Colin White steps up to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. One for two last time there. Not able to connect on that one. Good job by Erford. Hostile by Erford. Even as he was sliding on the ground, kept his dribble and gave Ottawa Glandorf the extra possession. And there, uh, now we're going to have the foul. Jackson, this yep. one's going to go against Jackson. Great hustle. And that will be the 17th foul. So Leo Max is going to go to the free throw line to shoot the one and one. Check out this hustle. You make. Run hard, get past, just snuck around, knock that one, gets on the floor. <laughs> now, you know, that's also he didn't get his feet out of bounds. You see, wow, he spun himself. He almost got himself another one. Titans four of eight from the foul line so far here in the second half. Leo Mag not able to connect on the front end of the one and one. This one gets poked away by, by Grant Schrader. And here, look at Hunter Stexley, guys Tyson selling out. Ball. Yes. Gonna have a foul. We'll wow. see who this one's on. And it looks like they're gonna call it on Stexley. They are. Hunter Stexley picks up the foul. He's no, he doesn't. Foul. No, Excuse yeah. me. They were pointing at he was the one that got fouled. Yeah. So it goes on number 12, Gary Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. So next shoulder is going to step up to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line to see if he can't connect on the one and one. Rattles out. Harry comes up with the rebound. Get in front of him here. Tell you what, it tells you how much this game means to them. Both teams got guys on the floor diving after that ball. This is great to see. Great effort by all. 
everybody involved in this game. This game matters. These guys, a lot of these guys played a lot of minutes. Back door the to Benny Powell, blocked by Mag. A big block for the Titans. Under two left to go, tied at 38. Benny Powell gets a good job going back door, and Mag says, no, -uh, not here. And he, long arms got that one blocked. I think that kind of startled Benny Powell there a little bit. Under Speck Schulte. Going to pull it back down as the Titans looking for a good offensive possession here. Ooh. Benny Powell reaches in and just pokes that one away. Yeah. That wingspan was able to take that one right away. What a, what a great defender he is. they got a lot of guys that can guard. Smith goes tough into the lane. Josiah Smith, a heck of a time to come up with your first two points of the game. And they are on top, 40 to 38. Here's the block by Mag and gets that one, but unfortunately uh, he couldn't get there when Smith, he cut hard and, you know, good thing with him is he got into Mag and right, he, he didn't let the shot blocker, as you could tell on that replay, Mag could just extend and make the block before Smith went in. He got into Mag and then he scored it. Take a look at Lakota East upcoming schedule. They have conference games against Hamilton and Sycamore still. For Ottawa Glendorf, that game against the Fines that we've talked about. We also have Lexington and Eastwood. So that game against the Fines will be for the WBL championships. Yeah, and you, and you look, Lexington's playing really, really well right now too, and so is Eastwood. The, the Titans don't end the get end the season with uh, any patsies, man. These these three good teams here to end the schedule, and and again, that's kind of why the Titans schedule these tough games, prepare for tournament. And hopefully for them, a long tournament run and, and uh, see what happens here with a minute 20 to go. Titans down two. Look for something with White or some sort of slip with him coming off a screen because they are selling out when White comes off some screens here. So look to see if the Titans coaching staff sets something up with a slip involved with someone screening for White. 38 points for Ottawa Glandorf tonight. Be able to hold this offense to that point total is just it's very impressive. This defense from Lakota East can't say enough good things about it. They're looking to come up with one more stand, though, as Ottawa Glandorf needs to try to pull even. A little bit of halt in play as it looked like there might have been something on the floor. Steck shoulder picks it up, gets it off to the side. Colin White trying to trigger the inbounds. Finally does get it in, and Steck Shoulder gets it. He's going to be guarded tightly by Mitchell. Erfurt going to go baseline against Smith. He gets the and one. Caden Erfurt, yeah. a three-pointer in the first, a three-pointer in the second, three-pointer in the third, and now he's going to get a chance for a three-pointer the old-fashioned way here in the fourth. And I tell you, you know, they ran White trying to come off maybe a ball handoff, but Beanie Powell was right in his shorts. Herford gives Ottawa Glandorf the one-point lead with 109 left to go. Perry. Oh, Long cool. pass and a little bit too much on that yeah. one as he was trying to use his eyes to look off the defenders and put too much on it. Out of bounds, ball going to go back to the Titans. Let's see if the Titans... Uh, Titans still have three timeouts here. Look for Titans to, again, run something with White because they are selling out to make sure he doesn't touch it. Ball in first. Schrader gets it down to Erford. And we're going to have a timeout. This one's going to be by the Titans. And it looks like it's just going to be a 30-second timeout. We will step aside when we return. A minute left to go here in the fourth. Ottawa Glendorf holding on to a one-point lead. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School in the Supreme Court as the Titans hold on to a one-point lead with a minute left to go here in the fourth quarter. They have done a nice job of getting back into this one as they were down big for a while. Trailed Lakota East for the majority of the game and then about halfway through that third quarter. The offense got rolling, and it has been back and forth ever since. White finds a wide open mag. 
I think even Mag was surprised to find himself that wide open. Takes yeah. it to the basket and finish. And they were jumping on White and Erford, and Mag just kind of found himself wide open under the basket, and they just forgot all about him. 43-40, Benny Powell gets cut off as he was driving. Ends up into the hands of Perry. Perry's going to pull up for three. That one's going to be off. Rebound comes down to White. White gets it ahead to Erford. Long pass. Schrader on the hesitation. He gets it to go. Grant Schrader gives Ottawa Glandorf the five-point lead with 20 seconds to go. Benny Powell pulls up for three. That one's no good. Mag comes up with the rebound, and he is going to be fouled. Theo Mag went up high to pull that one down. In traffic as well. Had two different Lakota East players draped all over him. And in a game that did not seem like it was going to go Ottawa Glendorf's way, they have found a way to win. Yes, they did. They got a couple turnovers and, and you know, got their pace, kind of as you mentioned, halfway through that third quarter and that fourth quarter. It was kind of playing the way the Titan once, you know, uh, East tried to slow them down, uh, but they just had too many turnovers coming. And uh, Titans took over. Theo Mag makes his first free throw shot from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Lines up his second. And it is good. Seven point lead, 15 seconds left to go. Smith gets it over to Mitchell. Mitchell gets a clean look at three, gets it to go. We're gonna have a quick timeout by Lakota East as Julian Mitchell makes this just a four point game with 7.4 seconds left to go. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't over. They get a quick turnover in a, in a basket. It's, you know, I, I alternating possession. I know Titans will be in the double bonus, but I don't, I jump balls in favor of the Titans too, so. Titans got to get the ball in. Make sure they're coming to the ball. Make sure they don't turn it over. Allow them to get an easy basket or even a uh, wide open three. Hawks only got one timeout left, so that is going to be a very difficult task. I think the key to this whole thing is Titans got to get the ball in. If they do turn it over, it's got to be on their end of the court. Let's see if the Titans throw it long. Maybe one of those, that slip screen that they had wide open for a dunk. See if they try to set that up again here. In a game script that I'm not really sure anybody could have predicted, you just said Ottawa Glandorf with a minute left to go was only going to have 38 points on the scoreboard. I think anybody would have thought that, that was going to be a definite a loss for them. They have found a way here. And we're going to have a foul no, as Sexual yep. gets the oh, push. That's Elijah Perry has done an excellent job defensively all night long, no, no. and that once more proves true. Now that's going to make uh, East on line for one and one because they're going to call that on Hunter Stexel for a push, I think. So now yeah, maybe it's a player control foul, so it's a charge. James 7 should be a one and one. In for East. Elijah Perry's going to check out. Yes. Smyers is their three-point special. It looked like he came in and hit a couple earlier in the game. Cody East looking for the inbounds. Has to get it in. Five seconds. Barron down the last second. Threw it in. Theo Mag takes it away. Three seconds left to go. Going to pull it out. And that is going to do it. Ottawa Glendorf. Had a fight all yes, night did. long, but in the end had just enough plays to come away with the victory. They are going to win it 47-43. We'll step aside and we'll be back with tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner on WOSN. Welcome back to Otto Glendorf High School. I'm being joined by Colin White. And Colin, congratulations on the victory tonight. Not the typical game that we're used to seeing as far as the offense goes, but you guys found a way in the end. Yeah, it was a very physical game. I mean, the, the first half just felt like it was very slow, and that's not the style we play there in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. We went on a, a couple of runs, and that really ignited us to the win. What do games like tonight mean for you guys as you have a big showdown coming next week, the tournament is right around the corner, when you guys can find ways to win, even when the things that you're typically used to doing doesn't work? It, it shows improvement. In uh, December, we lost the game exactly like that by one point, and then in January, we lost the game by two points like that, and tonight we pull out a win. It just shows that improvement and shows the, the, the momentum we have towards coming towards the tournament. So, you know, we all know there's never any looking ahead. You guys weren't looking ahead to next week at all this weekend, but now that you guys can finally focus on next Friday, how big is that matchup coming up with Defiance coming to town? 
I mean, it's huge. I mean, this place is going to be rocking. It's going to be loud in here, and you know, it's what you want. Your, your last seconds, the last WBL game, you want to come in here and, and put on a show and hopefully uh, clinch a WBL title. All right, thanks, Colin. Appreciate it. Good win tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Being joined back by my broadcast partner is the time to take a look at tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner. Check out tonight's winner on WOSN's YouTube page. You can see all the highlights from tonight's game. And we had some conversations. That it was difficult tonight, but when you looked at it, you know, especially when Colin was able to get things done at the free throw line there in the second quarter, a very deserving winner tonight. Yeah, and he kept them close there in that first half. You know, a lot of guys were struggling. He was getting to the line. He was, you know, he wasn't scoring them in bunches, but he was at least getting to the line and causing some problems. And and even Erford made a couple shots late. And the reason was because three guys are going to White. They fake the handoff. He scores. He puts a lot of pressure on the defense. And, and you know, not only does he make shots, but he does he does draw the attention and let's allow some of the other guys, as we've seen late in the game, Erford and White, they were going right after him. They let Theo Mag kind of wide open. They kind of forgot about him. He went right to the rim, got an easy basket late. And I think that's all because they know White is the guy that they want to get fouled. So, you know, he does a good job also, too, of passing when he gets in there with that co coverage. And, you know, he does get beat up a lot. And he, he mentioned how physical this game was. And, you know, he didn't say they were beating me up. He just said they're physical. And so that's that shows his character. And what a great honor for him to get this award tonight. All right, that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium. We'd like to thank our entire crew, everybody working back in the trucks and behind the cameras. We appreciate everything that you guys do. One final time from the Supreme Court, Ottawa Glendorf. It wasn't easy, but they come away with the victory, 47-43 over Lakota East. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.